um, hit record. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to um, our college roundtable. Um, this is on uh, college success with, with Lumen Learning, and um, it, this will be recorded, so we'll be sharing this out. And so this is a, a webinar based on the experience of um, Angela, um, I'm sorry, Andrea Scherer at, at, <laughs> at, Scottsdale, uh, at Scottsdale Community College. And, um, and basically what we're going to be doing is it, whether you teach college success, transitional studies, uh, counseling, online, face-to-face uh, -face, hybrid we will be talking about how uh, the Waymaker courseware works with uh, college success so let's go ahead and I'm going to share my share my screen start with some slides and then we'll we'll jump in for those of you that are um, attending uh, live um, I would really encourage you to use the chat if you hover your cursor over there you'll see participants Q&A polling if you click on the chat it will give you a screen to um, you um, okay great so we've got Holly from Walla Walla, Julie from San Jax, this is great. So we've got uh, Washington, Texas, Arizona, Montana, um, uh, and I'm in Washington State, so this is great. A good, true representation of, of the West. So if you have questions as I'm talking or as Andrea is talking, please put those in the chat and I'll come back later and, um, and facilitate those questions as we're having a conversation with Andrea. I, um, I have a little bit of a difficult time uh, monitoring the chat while I'm talking while I'm trying to do slides and um, uh, and I think uh, and I really want Andrea to focus on talking about her fabulous course and so really as your thoughts come up or if you want to chat to each other please do so but I will monitor that and then once I start sharing my screen um, and I'll be able to bring up and you should be able to see my slides here in a minute so you'll see um, my, my face you might have just heard my dog sneeze <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he's, a, he's an uh, ardent supporter of OER and, uh, and online pedagogy. Okay, so let me get rid of the chat there for just a second and we'll start here. So um, this is a round table. We've been doing these in all of the, um, all of the regions that we support and, um, and I am, I'll just introduce myself very quickly and then I'll let Andrea introduce herself. Um, my name is Allison. I go by Indy with Lumen Learning. Uh, that's my, my nickname. There are lots of Allisons in open education so I took my dad's nickname um, and I'm the director of teaching and learning for the West and the West includes Iowa to Hawaii <laughs> with Lumen so uh, <laughs> I, I, I used to be all over the country and now I focus generally on the West and so I was really impressed when we talked to Andrea I don't know if that was last year last summer yeah so it was last week, year yeah we came and we did a tour and talked to some of our teachers and i was really impressed uh with what andrea was doing as a teacher with college success so i asked my colleague paul golish who i partner with here in the west if we could get um another arizona um superstar in the spotlight and he thought that it was a great idea as well so andrea go ahead and say a little bit about yourself okay i'm not not sure that the uh, superstar status is exactly <laughs> correct but thank you for that my name is Andrea. I am a counselor um, at Scottsdale Community College. And in my role as a counselor, I get to do one-on-one -on -one sessions with students as well as teach. And the class in which I'm using the Waymaker course is called Strategies for College Success. I'm using it in my two sections of that class this semester, and they are both fully face-to-face -face courses. All right, great. And um, so I'll, I'll basically, I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction of, of Lumen and, o, and OER, and then we'll get straight to uh, looking at Andrea's course and talking to her. So um, I, I would like to hear from you if you'll put it in the chat. I'll read it later. I'm not going to read it right now. But if you'll just put it in the chat, you know, why are you here today? I know some of you already teach with Waymaker, and that's awesome. I would love for um, if we have um, if we have a, a minute to maybe share ideas, uh, that would be wonderful because I think that basically I truly believe that OER scales when teachers talk to other teachers. Um, I used to teach, I, I taught college success before it was um, a part of uh, a lot of college success initiatives and before it was required. And um, my first experience with teaching it, um, I was teaching an accelerated two week course. It was a pre fall course and we had everything set up for our college success course beautifully. It was going to have this e portfolio. It was going to be all online it was going to be integrated into the lms and the day before we were going to kick off that course my colleague and i found out that none of the technology worked <laughs> and so we had to uh, go back 
to overheads and handouts and three ring binders. So we went from uh, being innovative and moving ahead of the curve to nothing working. So that's really, <laughs> that really what got me, it got me started actually thinking about technology and looking into some of these educational technology companies and what was going on and why didn't things work. And so, um, but I love teaching that course. And, uh, and I know that it's moved into some, in some schools it lives in adult basic ed, some schools it lives in counseling, some it lives in, uh, they do interdiscipline, like so uh, it, different disciplines take turns teaching it. So, you know, why are you here today? If you'll add your questions to the chat, what do you want to learn? These are typically, I added these four squares because if you're trying to convince your colleagues about OER or, or moving to um, a, a lower cost alternative for your textbook, it's usually affordability, access, retention, and completion. And the textbook market is broken. As you all know, as, to, as teachers who are trying to teach college success, the hardest thing for me as a college success teacher was I was trying to teach reading strategies to students that weren't purchasing their textbooks. I didn't understand that at the time, uh, but I discovered this, um, this brilliant woman who is the CEO of my company, Kim Thanis, and her, the co-founder of my company, David Wiley, were taking a look at this uh, broken textbook market. And I thought that this phrase really hits home to a lot of the, um, the barriers to student success. And so these are some stats I, I like to share with teachers. Um, th th these are some really useful statistics to share with administrators or your colleagues. They're also really depressing. 26% um, drop the course, 38% earn a poor grade, taking fewer courses, 67% go without the textbook. This is something you've probably already encountered as, as a teacher. Uh, so let me go here. This is another statistic that I find reaches most generations of teachers. Uh, 1995, Gen Xers, 1970, baby boomers, but 800% the uh, a rise of textbook. And I truly believed as a, as a teacher when I adopted OER before I even knew what it was, I just was looking for a way to save my students money. Uh, it really bothered me that my students couldn't afford their textbooks. I couldn't change their tuition. I couldn't change what was happening in American education, but I could change that they could could afford their textbooks. And once I started to get to understand open education a little bit, um, this definition is one that we use typically at, at Lumen, and the open educational resources gives the free use and repurposing by others. So what Lumen has done is that Lumen allows that uh, technology that, um, that basically that we try to, with our different platforms that, that we have, we try to give the um, give a, a platform for teachers to share um, courses, and we also give an opportunity for people to um, adopt um, and adapt. And the five R's there, some of you might be familiar with that, um, retaining, reusing, revising, remixing, and redistributing. Basically, right there, what that means is that we're really looking at building on a community of work to save students money. Lumen's purpose, uh, just a little bit about us. We are a team of educators, learning scientists, technologists, entrepreneurs. We're based out of Portland. We have over 150 um, institutional clients and um, over 170,000 students. And, um, and our textbook savings, as you can see there, and I'm trying, to, um, I'm trying to move my face in case, I don't know if my face is blocking the statistic there, but I've lost my cursor. Um, but this, um, these textbook savings that we have in 2017, is because of people like Andrea. So I'm going to move along so I can <laughs> get to her talking. Um, and you, one of the things that I'm most proud of with our company, with our uh, three platforms that we have right now, one is an e-textbook replacement, that's Candela. Uh, we also have our online homework manager, that's our for math, and then Waymaker, which is what we're going to talk about today. And this $15 million in savings in 2017, it's really impressive and I'm really proud of that work. But I'm most proud that we're helping many at-risk students that are help passing courses and earning higher grades. These are the students that are um, our community college students, so I think a lot of you um, have those students or regional publics or state institutions. And so to get to why we're here today, um, Waymaker is 
basically, um, if you've heard the phrase adaptive platform, what Waymaker is trying to do is trying to make an interactive experience with a college textbook. If you think about it that way, we have the content that the student reads, and then we have a lot of other elements that integrate directly into your learning management system. And when you hear personalized learning or a personalized study plan, what that means is that the student interacts with the content by taking quizzes, we have try it, we have simulations, and basically what it does is it gives students a, um, a personalized or a customized uh, study plan. So if a student has, say, 20 minutes to study, he or she can take a look at, you know, the, the one learning outcome that they might be struggling. And, you know, of course, as teachers, we want them to read it all. But the reality of that is that, you know, their time is precious and, and limited. And so we want them to focus on where they want to, where they need to learn the most. And we really wanted to focus here on, on the idea of an, um, an adaptive platform where we help people get smarter, not the robot. Um, and so if you think about the technology as the robot there, we want the robot to help uh, students learn and we want to help um, teachers actually maximize their time. I, I make a joke about the, a, a robot. The study plan is actually a, a really nice way of, um, of bringing together all of the learning outcomes. So this is a, a picture and we'll take a look at this in a minute um, with Andrea's course. And I know some of you are already familiar with it, but we really wanted to focus on having a, a personalized study plan where a student can go in, interact with assessments, get some feedback on where to study, give them some feedback on progress, and then, you know, as college success teachers, transitional studies, you're really interested in teaching students how to learn, right, and how to think about learning and learn by doing, and so we, we don't want to take the place of your learning management system. We really want to create something that provides a lower cost for students, as well as something that increases engagement and um, and then helps the student with their metacognition big task a big order as you know and so uh, you there are lots of players on the market right now with open education um, five or so years ago they laughed us out the room and now um, the I bet you have heard from every big publisher about their um, open educational alternative um, or their option for the fall but I think we're different and I think we're the best <laughs> of course I'm biased uh, but we have <laughs> always focused on low cost and day one access I don't think any of our partners, uh, any of our competition can say that. We really try to align with content and faculty control. So whatever Andrea has done in her class, that's awesome. That works for Scottsdale. Scottsdale, that's wonderful for us. If it works in Arizona and we can share that in New York, we want to be that, uh, that conduit of sharing. We also try to get lots of practice and, and feedback in our courses, um, try to help the students where to focus and where to learn. And I also think that we're trying to do something a little different than others where we're focusing on that faculty student connection and Andrea I think we'll talk a little bit about that we're also doing yeah. a lot of data driven improvements where we are doing research right now on specific assessments where students in all of our um, in all of our courses where they're struggling on specific assessments and we're going back and we're looking at those assessments especially um, in our econ courses and micro and macro economics we have identified areas where students were really struggling and we broke it down and tried to scaffold things better for the students so I'm really excited about that college success I think um, it was a great course that came part of a, a collaboration of, of many folks putting together a course that would try to work for as many um, institutions as possible. A little bit more about Lumen and then we'll uh, get to the, the fun stuff with Andrea. Um, we have done some research with Waymaker and in particular, we've taken a look at the Pell penalty students, so Pell eligible, uh, basically the students who struggle, first generation, first year college students um, who are on the Pell grant, their scores are going up. So what this data slide basically means is that a student who struggles, who has no one at home to help him or her become a better student, probably struggle, struggles with internet access, has struggled with college, even just getting to class is sometimes hard, food insecurity, you name the cauldron of horrors that that faculty and students are going through right now. Um, and these students are getting um, a half a grade higher. So this is the difference between a C minus and a C or a C plus and a B minus. So big, big gains. 
A lot of our uh, institutional partners are, are large. We've got SUNY and CUNY from New York, Maricopa in Arizona, Salt Lake City, Iowa Community College, their online consortium is growing, Maryland, California, and basically from section to system, I think Lumen can help uh, with OER adoption and scaling. I don't think we have the answer for OER. There are many answers, but I think we have an answer that works quite well uh, for some folks. So, that all being said, okay, so I, you know who Lumen is, we talked about that, and, um, and then if, you're, if you've got some stuff going in the chat, that's great, please do. Um, but I'm going to start with a question. I have a few questions for Andrea, and then um, we'll, get, we'll turn it over to do a little bit of her tour. So, Andrea, I shared that I loved what you talked about with your course, and Can you hear me? It, I've frozen up. Okay, so I can see on the chat, Holly and Ramona can hear me. Um, it sounds like they can't hear, you guys can't hear Indy anymore. Um, my screen is completely frozen. Let me see if, um, I am actually going to, oh, I don't know if I should do that or not. I was going to say I was going to leave the meeting and then come back, but I'm a little nervous to do that because if I end the meeting, I might end it on all of you guys. I can see Indy again. Indy, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. So that's um, such, that's so fantastic. It's like throwing a party and then your host just suddenly leaves, right? It's like, oh, here, here I'm, I'm, I'm just about to bring out some dinner and then they just disappear. Um, okay. So I really apologize about that. And that, so that means I lost the chat. If you had some things you were posting in the chat and um, gosh, I'm not sure what, I'm, I, I, I'm sure it's still, okay, it's still recording. So we're there. All right, so let's do. And I will just, and I can just jump back in. I, I got right to the point where I was about to start my answer to why I chose Waymaker oh, and then it froze okay. up, so. <laughs> so, so anyways. I, I, at the end of this webinar, I'll share the link. Have you, um, have you all seen the, uh, the, the spoof on a conference call um, in real life? Um, it's really, no. it's basically what just happened to me is that the guy just disappears from the table. Um, and so I apologize, uh, my Wi-Fi just dropped. And so um, I'm sure I was in the middle of my most brilliant thought. And uh, so let me go back to sharing my screen. So let's pretend like that never happened. And, uh, and while you're doing that, what you had just what you had just shared was you had just thrown the question to me of why I picked Waymaker. So I can pick it up from there while you're getting your screens back. So suspenseful. Okay, go for it. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I really liked the idea of OER for all of the reasons that Indy had spoken about, the, the affordability, the access, the increased retention and completion, but I wasn't quite ready to make my own OER course. Um, and then I was introduced to Lumen and Waymaker, and I thought it might be a good fit for me because it was OER, um, but that was already prepackaged in a way that works for me. I am not somebody who's super text centric in my strategies for success class. In teaching um, college success, which it sounds like many of you know, our students have very different needs. They have very different skills. The tools and ideas that one student needs are not the ones that another student needs. So in my course, I am not looking for students to master all of the content in the book. I want them to be able to read and interact with every chapter, but I want them to have the ability to focus on what they really need. Um, so essentially, I use the Waymaker course in my face-to-face -face class to facilitate a flipped classroom. Um, I want my students, what I really want is I want them to come to class prepared to discuss and apply the concepts um, from the book in a very active learning setting. So what I'm really looking for them to be able to do is demonstrate that they've read the chapter, 
um, and they can demonstrate that by taking a quiz. Um, so I'm able to have a sense that they've at least taken a look at the material, they've taken the quiz, um, and, and then they come to class, and I know that they're at least at a basic level prepared to discuss and analyze and apply the, the concepts to class. Um, and I do like Waymaker's approach to learning quite a bit because it supports some of the strategies that um, I am trying to uh, teach my students to do, which is check your comprehension along the way and go back and focus on the areas where you don't quite have that knowledge. And the, the program actually allows students to do that seamlessly. Um, I have compared Waymaker to the online version of the textbook that is most commonly used in my department. And I personally liked Waymaker better in that it's much more customizable. Um, I can use it for my own purposes much easier where it appears to me that some of the other kind of online textbooks work really well if you're teaching an online course, um, but this course works really well um, as a supplement for a face-to-face -face college success class. So kind of a long answer to that one, but that's really why I, I really use it to facilitate the flipped classroom. And, um, just out of curiosity, Andrea, then your department, you guys, you can choose whichever textbook you want to, and everybody can do something different, or do you have to agree yeah. on something? Okay. Um, yeah. So within, within those of us who are full-time, we're allowed to choose. There's kind of been a standard book that, that, that we've used and liked, you know, for a long time that has a lot of, of great features, um, but, but we're allowed to, to make those, those different choices um, based on our own teaching styles and you know to an extent we want to be able to offer different options to our students yeah so in that model that, that your department uses do you guys have then certain assignments that you have to do I, I worked for colleges where you know we could use whatever we wanted but we had to do a portfolio or we had to do a group project uh, we had certain um, a, a sort of benchmark assignments that we had to, to do in our courses but how we did it and what we did didn't didn't matter that's exactly our that's exactly how we're set up we have certain standard assignments that that we assign as full-time faculty, that our adjunct faculty assign, um, but how we go about those assignments um, is, is completely up to us. So, um, you know, in my experience, every college success textbook that I have um, used in any way, they all provide the basics that would allow the students to do those standard assignments. Yeah. Yeah, I it was um, I always felt that I got you know feedback from the students be like, oh, that teacher makes you write two pages, but Allison makes you write 30, you know, it was like it was an over exaggeration. <laughs> I made my students write a lot because I was an English major and I believed that that would help them set up for uh, English 101. So, um, so that's great. So, and for those of you that are listening, you know, I, I think that um, that Waymaker can work department wide or if you have the academic freedom where each of, you know, everybody can choose their their own course. Um, the other thing too I'll add is that you know if let's say Andrea was the chair of her department or the head lead for um, the, uh, for a, a, like being adjunct coordinator basically she could set up her course and then share that course with everybody in the department and then whatever changes Andrea makes and the master then would go would push out to everyone else in in that course and so that's a nice way I, as for setting up adjuncts um, or you know um, who may or may not have course materials um, it, as they're starting your college um, so anyway there that's a uh, one one way of, um, of of using Waymaker so the other question that I wanted to get to before um, the the internet kicked me out of our party uh, was um, what was what customization uh, customizations did you make to the course did you make any changes um, either in your LMS your your LMS is canvas and so uh, any LMS you might be using whatever she's saying will, will work and so um, did you did you do anything once we delivered the the course to you that's that's one thing that I really liked when 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 Paul initially showed us the, um, the the course one thing I liked is that I knew I wasn't going to have to make a lot of customizations which was important to me for taking it on in the first place I'm a relatively new full-time faculty member um, so I am kind of at the beginning of getting my my course set up the way that I want it to and I was really kind of looking for a product that it would allow me to jump right in and use it make some small customizations, and then over time, decide on maybe more significant changes. 
so it, it was pretty much ready to go for me from day one. I, I did change the order of the chapters in Canvas, which is our LMS. So I was able to, you know, reorder them to, to go in the order that I preferred. And I did change some of the language in like what each module or basically which each, what each chapter was called to make it a little bit clearer to the students that this was their textbook and these were the individual chapters. Um, I did set my, uh, that you have the ability to set automatic messages within Waymaker to reflect your personal style. So there are some automatic messages, both helpful for students who are struggling, but also congratulatory for students who are doing well, and that you're able to customize those to um, suit your voice a little bit more. Um, I'm currently using all of the um, graded quizzes as is, but I don't, quite honestly, I don't love all of them. Um, and so I will probably choose some um, changes and questions in the future. They work fine. They work completely fine for the way I use the course. Um, but I will, in future semesters, customize some of those quiz questions, and I'm able to do that. That's great. And, you know, I would say, I mean, I'll just add, uh, some of you may, may know this pain and suffering from uh, other uh, OER experiences. The, it, the assessments have been the most difficult. Uh, basically, um, you know, if you had somebody who created the content, maybe other people created the, the test banks or the assessments, and so the voice may not align. Um, and so, um, so yeah, I think that that, I think that that's great. I mean, I, I always tell people with Waymaker in particular to just use it as is and then make notes of what you don't like or what you would like to change later. Um, but I think that most of the people who have um, adopted uh, Waymaker, they, they do exactly what you've described, or they, they, they make a ton of changes, or they do nothing at all. Um, and uh, right. and, so, and I, I think that that's, um, I think that that's partly why this course is particularly great for the, um, for the price of the students and for, for what you're, you're getting. Uh, so let me, so that's, well, and what's really nice, I was gonna say too, what's nice about it too is the fact that it's in the LMS is some of the customizations to my course that are kind of outside of Waymaker, it's really just easy to also have those in Canvas. So Scottsdale specific information, you know, I just have another module for that, that that looks similar to what they see as their module that's a chapter, you know, so I can add in information and, and my own PowerPoints, all of those things just really seamlessly fit into the Canvas shell. Yeah, I agree. I think that one of the challenges for this particular discipline is that there's been a lot of funding, especially with a lot of the initiatives uh, with involving, um, you know, whether you're an Achieve the Dream school or whether it's uh, Pathways, what, name your initiative uh, that has happened in the last four or five years. There's a lot of work that's gone into um, either changing the culture of college success, you know, instead of having enrollment services, having signs on your campus that say register here, things like that, um, that or just having your writing center information or your counseling center mm -hmm. um, that just works really nicely you know Waymaker comes in there as that um, as the as the reading and the assignments and then you can weave in all of those local resources really nicely and, right um, and that's one of the things that I've, I've uh, a lot of places will say oh we put so much time and effort into our college success course because we you know we've customized all of these things in our learning management system but you know it, this plugs in pretty nicely so um, so with that, that uh, speaking of students, uh, so what have your students shared with you about Waymaker? It was funny when, when Indy and I were talking yesterday about this, I said, well, I said, kind of my, my, my most general and honest answer is, you know, no news is good news. You know, <laughs> students without <laughs> prompting, you know, without me asking them, which I actually intend to do more of. But just as this semester has gone on, my students have done well. They're, they're taking the quizzes. They're interacting with the material. They're coming to class prepared. So their behaviors are telling me that they're using it. And they're not complaining about anything. Um, they loved, as I did, and I can't believe I forgot to say this two slides ago, but the day one access. Um, we have a, a course fee associated with our class that's able to cover the cost. So therefore, as soon as students have access to Canvas, boom, they've got their book. Nobody has to buy it. Nobody has any reason to not have it. Um, and I know that they do like not having to buy an additional book, so the cost. Um, but also having it just there immediately from day one of the class. So they don't even have a chance to feel like they get behind. Um, so they're, they're using it, they're interacting with it well. The one thing I do hear is that they really appreciate 
the positive automatic messages that go out. Um, most instructors will tell you that we do a great job of attending to those students who aren't doing well and reaching out to them. And we all want to give the positive feedback to the students who are doing really well, but when time gets short and you can only focus on one population, we tend to forget to give the kudos to the ones who are doing well. And I frequently get responses back to the automatic emails that go out that look very much like they came from me that said, hey, great job on that quiz. I frequently get responses to that, like, thank you so much for that positive feedback. That, I, that really means a lot to me. So I do hear that. Yeah, we, we've seen some hilarious responses from students where they were, you know, the automated messaging, for those of you that don't know, um, we'll, we'll look at this here in a minute. These are uh, messages that go out that are triggered based on the student's performance. So if they're doing well on quizzes or if they're not doing quizzes, there's a, a little bit of a, a, a nudge to the student that says, hey, student, you'll do a lot better if you take the self-check or nice job on that self-check. Uh, and your students will respond and be like, yeah, I, I studied really hard last night. You're right. Or, you know, uh, on the other mm -hmm. hand, uh, the students that, you know, that are struggling, they have uh, responded back to the teachers and have said, you know, yeah, I, you know, I, I actually had to work a double shift. Um, my babysitter canceled on me. I really didn't have a chance. I focused on my algebra homework this week instead of your class. I needed to spend the time on the, my math class. And so there's uh, definitely a, a little bit more of an engagement, I think, from the, the student's perspective. And with day one access, we've also found some data, too, that if um, that um, a lot of times, even though students have the day one access, they aren't always accessing those materials. So we've found that in, in classes where they only have like a midterm or some something that's uh, worth a lot of points, they there may not be. They'll have day one access, but they may not get there until day 28 <laughs> because nothing is due or they're. <laughs> the way that the course is designed. So I think that that's, a, you know, really interesting because for us, day one access has been so, um, so important. So love to hear that. The and, one thing I will say, yeah. the one thing that I have heard kind of along those lines is the one thing I wish, and, and I'll, I'll show everybody it when, when we're looking at my course, but like all of the, the chapter content and then the study guide is all kind of in one place and then you have to go somewhere else for the graded quiz. And I have had some students mid-semester go, wait, there's, there's a textbook? Like they were just clicking on the quiz right. because they see the word quiz. And you'll see that I have my language very clear that there's a textbook, but they go straight to the quiz and they just take it. And because they do have a couple of options to take it, if they're good test takers, some of the questions they just guess and they're doing well enough on the quiz that they're fine with that and never crossed their mind that there was like a reading part. So I do hear sometimes that they wish that all of that could be in one place, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's something we we do have a user designer that we've hired and we, we've we been doing a lot of testing to figure that out. And a lot of teachers have named, renamed it instead of the study plan. So let's, let me, let me get to okay. actually, let's, let's take a look at your course now because that's, okay. that's where we are next. And then I think that'll make sense of some of the things that we're, we're talking about. So, um, so Andrea, now if you um, hover over the share the screen, you should be able to take it, take it over. And um, I think that'll make some make some sense because, you know, on, on the one hand with the Waymaker design, we were trying to get rid of the endless links that you would have. Um, the first course that I built with OER, I probably had 300 links to, to, to several different resources. I, I nicknamed it a Franken course, you know, lots of different pieces together and it's alive, saving students money. Um, but then, at, you know, when uh, websites updated or things changed, um, I had broken links and it, you know, it, it really wasn't a, a good design of the, of the course. I'm not saying that you can't do that and make a beautiful course. You, you, you certainly can. I just wasn't able to do it. And, uh, and so, yeah, the, the study plan, I think, um, you know, there needs to be a little bit of guidance, I think, from the teacher to help the students, um, uh, man, you know, maneuver through there. So, Andrea, are you able to share the screen? Did it give you that I option? I think so. Did it, is it doing it yet? I think it's... There you go. I've, there it, it is. Okay. All right. So, everybody can see it? Yeah, it looks great. Okay. So this is just kind of their home page that they get to to see that they're in the course. And so if any of you use Canvas at all, this, you know, this setup might look fairly familiar. This is exactly what all of my courses that use Canvas look like. It doesn't look any different from the, from the output because it's a Waymaker class. Everything related to Waymaker is under modules. So 
the start here, bulletin of their announcements, syllabus, modules, and grades, those are the options that my students see. And everything related to Waymaker is preloaded when I get the course under modules. So when I click there, you'll see that several things pop up. The first two, um, faculty resources and how to set up and manage your Waymaker course specifically tells me to keep those unpublished. So those are just something that I see that the students never see. Um, and within faculty resources, um, there's faculty tools and instructor resources um, that give you some wonderful tools. I can't show you kind of the meat of this one because it would show students' names. But what I can show you is that you can see individual student histories right here and automatic messages sent. If I were to click on those, it would pop right up. I could see how the students were doing on the Waymaker assignments. It's very crystal clear. And I could see all the automatic messages that have been sent out. And this is also where I can kind of manage what automatic messages go out. Um, and so that's a great resource there. And then the faculty resources. Um, one of the big ones here is there is a PDF link to the whole course, to the text. So I'm actually able to send that to students who might be concerned about times that they wouldn't have internet access. Um, they have a PDF link to the book. It's also something they can save and then have access to forever even after the course ends without having to worry about do I sell back the book or not and then lose that valuable information. So the quiz banks are here. Um, different assignments. Um, I don't use the assignments in my course because my course is a face-to-face -face course. So I have my own assignments that students do, but there's actually a really nice bank of assignments um, that you can use or that you can modify and use. I have turned some of them into journals for my class, but there's some really great assignments and there's a lot of them for each chapter. And then you can take a look at all the specific um, learning outcomes as well. So everything's housed really nicely. And here for time purposes, unless anybody wants to see something specific later, I'll just kind of let you know that those are there and then show you what the actual chapters look like. So um, let that catch up, close that. So there's also a module that is for students. Um, and so I named it orientation to online textbook. You know, I kind of put the word Waymaker there to get them looking at that. I'm able to set this module as required for my students before they're able to see anything else. I just put a little, this was something I created, you know, our online textbook um, that just gives them some general information and the chapters. But then everything else that's in this module um, was a, a part of this program. So all of these great resources for students to go through, practice, 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 how do you get to the starting line, Diving in, multiple attempts. I love this one. Can my quiz attempts get lost? Because they like many times tell us that it did. Um, and then what are the technical requirements? Um, and then there's a quick graded assignment, again, included um, by Lumen and Waymaker. That's just very simple for them to do. I'm able to adjust the points that it's worth and the due date, just like I would any other assignment in um, Canvas. But it's all right there. So from the very beginning, students have, in addition to my instruction, a place that they can refer back to and just kind of learn the basics about interacting with this online text. And then how here's how a typical week would look. So for my class, I just kind of name the module week two, I give them the dates that it is, and then I set it up to say this, required reading. And under there, I call this chapter two study plan. They would click here. And this is what I tell them is chapter two of their textbook. Um, and every chapter is set up in the same general format. What's really nice um, is I can kind of immediately see student view what it looks like to me and what it looks like to students and it looks a little different to each and it makes it easy to go back and forth. But they, they every chapter starts with a why it matters. Um, so it kind of sets the stage for why goal setting and time management are important. Um, and then it immediately lets you go into a pretest which is great. I tell my students that all the time, that when you are able to assess what you know before you even read something, you actually kind of kickstart the learning process. So why is this chapter important? And they scroll down. And then from here, they can pretty much just start using the next button. Um, and they can look at their study plan, or they can go back if they need to. But they're able to go next, show what you know, ungraded quiz, 
quick three questions that allows them to assess what they know before they even get started. They would take the quiz by clicking there. Um, and then it clicks through the chapter. And what's nice is every time they do one of these um, formative assessments, it keeps track of that for them, but I'm also able to see it. So if I have a student who's struggling, I'm able to quickly look and see, hey, you're not taking the pretest. You're not taking the formative assessments along the way, and maybe those would help you. Um, and so then the meat of the chapter looks like this. There's, there's always a picture. There's always a quote. You can kind of see subheadings up here, so under defining goals, time management and goal setting. You can see that there's a video indicated motivational strategies to support you. There's some text, social aspects of achieving your goal, um, dealing with setbacks and obstacles. And then once a student has gone through that section, they're actually able to do another self-check to get a sense of whether or not, again, not graded, but did I get a good sense of that section? And if they did, then they know they're good to go on to the next one. So it's set up that way that makes it really easy for them to move through manageable chunks of information um, that they're able to synthesize and take in and then take a brief quiz with no stress because there's not scores attached to this other than scores that indicate whether or not they've, they've, they've understood that material and then they can move on. And each chapter is set up that way. You can see again in physical environment, you've got the subheadings up here, the self-check, just kind of for the sake of um, time, just kind of want to show you that. So when there's a video in there, you've got the video um, link, it, it's, it's embedded right in there. They're able to watch that. They typically do a lot of things with student responses. Um, so a lot of different ways of interacting with the material. Um, one thing I want to show you, if I go back to, back into the module. There are a lot of videos and there are a lot of links. And because again, it's a face-to-face -face class, what I tell my students is that they are, um, it's up to them. I allow them to focus on what it is that's most important to them, but I do ask them to um, pick something and explore it further. So it picks something and follow one of um, the, the links that's there that gives them some in-depth information. And so I wanted to, to click on use of time and show you guys one of my favorite links that's, that's there. Oops. So this, one of the texts is this create a schedule. So an example of a pretty cool link that's in here that one of my students, if this was important to them, that they could follow, you know, you'll kind of scroll down um, and then you'll see that there's several things, printable class study schedule, ways to plan my time. But I like this 168 hour exercise. Then click right there, it takes them to an external site, um, but it's right there. They're able to, to click this in, total number of classes per week. Let's say I'm in class 12 hours and they can put their, course in there, I want to get an A in this class, I think I need to study for it for four hours, class B, and I'll just give a quick example here, you know, B in this class I need six hours, but then actually kind of tells them, okay, here's how many study hours, total academic hours, and then it even lets them go down through fixed activities, flexible hours, and I, in the, I don't know how many there are, but there are hundreds of these links, right, throughout the chapters. I think you might be muted. I, I don't know if other people can hear you. Oh, but, oh okay, it, it, there we go. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, we, that was one of the things that we um, that we heard uh, that 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 was a um, that yeah that 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 was a really useful part of this course. And so I think that you know some teachers will direct their students to do more or less. Um, mm -hmm. And some teachers, I think, have the students take screenshots of what they've done to, to turn, uh, so there's a variety of ways that people use that particular resource. Right. So that's kind of how the chapters are set up, and then the students can always go back to their study plan, and it shows them if they have mastered those different sections within the chapter, what they can go back um, and review so that they feel confident then going into the quiz, chapter two. So this is the one that's graded. And that's what I was talking about, how there's kind of everything, um, kind of the, the, the textbook material and the study plan, and then separately they have to go back into the module and then click here to take the quiz that has the due date and the points associated with it. Um, and then they take this quiz and it automatically, within Canvas, 
gets graded and gets posted to the grade book. They can take the quiz twice and it's not timed. And the not being timed, I find to be really nice. So if I have students in my class who have accommodations related to timing, I don't have to worry about um, not doing that for them. So it's, it's automatically set up that this isn't a time-based activity. And they do have the opportunity to take it more than once. So they take their quiz. Um, I'm able to here, you know, edit the assignment settings and, and do my grading as I would any quiz that I had created within, um, within Canvas altogether. So when you're kind of looking at that module the way I have mine set up, so for week two, they always have what's required for reading and the assignment, do they always have the quiz? And then I have other assignments that I just created on my own. Um, sometimes again, like I said, I've used some of the Waymaker assignments and modified those. Other times these are just where I've input my own material um, that, that, that I just like to use with these chapters to make it my own. And then I have the course set up week by week with all the dates, you know, these can be opened and closed. They all look about the same, um, you know, occasionally in one week they have two chapters to read. Um, and then, you know, I put other things down at the bottom. They have a service project. They have some optional assignments. I keep all of my PowerPoints. You know, that is one thing that unlike a publisher um, where they give you PowerPoints, you know, I, I've created my own, but I keep those kind of separate. And then I have, you know, STC links, current events um, in the campus and community. So that's, that's kind of how I have my course set up. India, is there anything else you feel like I should show? Um, one thing I, well, I, you know, I, uh, because you have students in this course that, that limit, you know, that limits a little bit right. of, of what, but I, you know, I, I, I think this is great. And, you know, I think one thing, if you could click into, let's click into chapter, uh, chapter two, just to show the, the study plan, right. um, one more time. Cause I think, you know, basically what we were talking about earlier about the, the readings, you know, this is where, um, the students, uh, you know, basically get all of their, their information. So just to, for those of you that might be new new to this where they're always designed with a why it matters the show what you know and then the information where they they dive in so to speak and then all of the the assessments and so I really love though all of the different things that you've added to it and um, and I think the the all of the resources that you showed for um, how this works for a flip classroom I mean it's really nice so um, yeah, so I mean, so that, yes, yeah, so there's always the, you know, why it matters, show what you know, and then like I always tell the students, you know, think of these, the dive in as the actual chapter broken down into these three sections. Then I think what sometimes though, so they do have a, the ability to quiz themselves to make sure overall they understand everything. They just need to know that that's all the supportive to see how prepared they are to go on and take the graded quiz. Um, when I'm an instructor view, it kind of shows me the average formative scores and the average summative scores. So I'm able to see that for my students when I'm an instructor and in instructor view. And when I'm in student view, it shows as a student how many of the activities they chose to do. So this is just, these are just showing mine from times I've played around in here as a student. You know, it tells them how many of the activities that they could have done that they've done. And then they have the option to check that they've completed this so they can get really involved in the study plan or not. If, if this was an online course, the, the options for really using this online study plan grow exponentially. Yeah, I and you know, and I think it works for um, all modalities, and uh, and so it's really great to see um, how you how you've designed your your course. And I want to encourage others to uh, put any questions that you have my um, in the chat. And uh, Ramona had posted about um, the OER for a multicultural online class. Um, we do not have that course as part of our catalog yet. Um, I, basically, and, and when I say yet, I'm not making any promises. Is basically, we've got a, a catalog that we're really focused on for uh, general education courses, which a lot of the multiculturalism courses, you know, they're a uh, part of, um, of, um, of uh, maybe um, an elective or a certain degree track. Um, so we'll get there though. I would say that there, um, there's a, a lot of folks working on a variety of open education courses. And so um, if there's one in particular, I, I, can, I can see what I can dig up for you, but that's usually a topic where I send faculty to either their, um, either to their instructional designers or to their librarians to see what might be out there, but it's not one that's currently um, in our catalog. 
So other, uh, if there are any other questions, go ahead and put those in the, in the chat. Uh, one question that came up uh, while you were um, presenting, Andrea, was about accessibility. And so uh, uh -huh. I just mentioned that our videos are captioned um, and, uh, and that we have uh, alt text for our images and that we work really, we work really hard to, um, you know, make sure that the, the work's on us and not your uh, disability services folks. Um, but we're certainly no better or no worse than than any other publisher out there. I think it's something that we're all really hoping to, to improve together. And that, yeah, there was a question about the, um, the, uh, the, the um, succeeding with Waymaker or the Orient, the, which I like how you've renamed it actually, the orientation to the online textbook, um, if that was yeah. in all of the courses. And uh, the other thing that uh, Andrea is just showing us too is that we have uh, decided to add in all of the training materials. Um, you can, uh, as part of a partnership with us, um, you can either call me um, or and I basically help all of our um, all of our teachers in the West set up their courses. I, I'll do trainings for virtual trainings for departments. I have helped teachers anywhere from four minutes to an hour <laughs> to set up their courses. <laughs> it all depends on what you want to do and. But we, we've kept, um, and then a lot of teachers, quite frankly, they haven't needed me at all because they just use the um, how to set up and manage your Waymaker course. And we have that unpublished in the course. Some teachers will drag it down to the bottom. We have it up at the top yeah. so that we, we want you to see it when you first get it. And, uh, and then after faculty have done it once, they never need it again. So um so it, it's nice that it's it's just we've gotten a lot of feedback and that when we had it as a separate link faculty weren't going to it it's it seemed like it was yeah. a normal thing to do with your course prep yeah i was gonna say it was and you know for the way that i use waymaker these steps were crystal clear very helpful and it was everything i needed to get my course set up and there is a statement related to accessibility um in here too that i'll pull up just for um the person that had the question on accessibility. So um, it does have um, that information directly addressed in there too. Yeah. And these are typically the conversations that we have with the administrators or as we're starting to, to get, um, as we're starting to, to partner with institutions. Um, and just in the interest of time, we've only have a, um, about three minutes left. I wanted to make sure there are any other questions that people wanted to put in the chat. If I missed those, uh, let me put in my, you'll probably get this as a, as a follow-up, but this is my email address. It's indy at lumenlearning.com. Uh, okay, so a quick question. Do many faculty use Candela and Waymaker if both are available? So that's a great question. Um, so if we, we do have a college success for Candela and Waymaker, so you would choose one or the other. Um, Candela would be just an e-textbook replacement. There wouldn't be any of the tools that, that Andrea just talked about there wouldn't be any of that design um, and so that would be the difference and um, and so basically faculty would choose one or the other now if there's a um, if there's a particular course like lifespan psychology there's only a candela version of that course but we do have an introduction to psychology and waymaker um, if a faculty member wanted to use uh, additional readings from a candela text we can add that to a waymaker course and that's something that would be hard for me to explain in 120 seconds <laughs> but it's possible uh, and so basically any combination of our courses we can definitely make work um, but typically if there's uh, one if there if it's one discipline you choose between the, um, which which platform um, and so the easiest way to remember is that Candela is the e-textbook replacement and Waymaker is uh, the beautiful course that um, Andrea just showed us and so we can talk about basically I do demos of both or or I talk to departments about what um, what you might want to do. All of our courses are listed if you go to lumenlearning.com and click on courses, you can see the ones that are available. Those aren't the only OER courses in the world that are available, there are many, but those are the ones that we have, um, that we support for our mission to, to support general education courses. And College Success has been a, a major part of, uh, I think it's one of our largest adoptions. Um, and, uh, and a course that also students have to take. And so um, any other questions before we, we wrap it up here today? All right, so I think we, 
yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so we can, yeah, we can either put you into a sandbox. Um, I will be sending some follow up with this um, webinar. I want to thank Andrea so much for uh, her patience and her time with helping me put on this webinar. It was so <laughs> fantastic to see your course and just want to thank you for sharing, um, you know, what you're doing with College Success and Waymaker and thank all of you for joining me today and joining us. You here are so welcome and I'm and I'm also happy to field any follow up questions by email too. So I don't know if my email address Indy, is something you can share with um, participants, but I'm always open to talking to anybody. So that would be great. That would be great. I, I know you're busy enough. So this was just fantastic that you made the time for us. And uh, yeah, and again, you know, as you're kind of taking in all this information, we uh, we will be sending some follow up and happy Friday, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, I'll end the recording here. And uh, for those of you that have listened, if you have any follow up questions, you are also in, uh, welcome to contact us. And thank you so much for joining us today.